solving, community oriented, shows professionalism and integrity, is a team player, is accountable, and a good steward. We have roll call, please. Shelley? Yes. Baller? Wally? Yes. Scott? Yes. Slack? Yes. Okay, and then next step is approval of the meeting agenda. Any discussion or on that or that is for a motion. A motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. Any other discussion? Roll call. You got the chat. Yes. Fine. Yes. Shelly? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shop? Yes. Okay, next up is consent agenda. It consists of the minutes of the August 19th City Council meeting. There's contract service payments, seven to Bolton and Bank, and one to Impact 7G, totaling $149,436.89. It claims in financials register $871,014.01. Excuse me, sir, $872. Two, okay, sorry, $872,014.01. And there are no licenses and permits this time. A motion, please. I move that we pass the consent agenda. I'll second. Any other discussion? Roll call. Wally? Yes. Klein? Yes. Shelley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, our city administrator stepped oh. out. So um, I'll go ahead and. Oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Oh, okay. oh, all right. I assume it's city administrator's yes, comments. So there's quite a bit on the agenda. Um, I'd say the biggest thing we've been working on is the community change grant application. Um, and pulling all those pieces together, I can talk. I will talk more about that once we get to that item on the agenda. Um, but has definitely been a large focus, um, along with getting ready to kick off the Perry Next strategic plan process, um, working with Bolton and Mink and the Ingenuity Company on kind of the overarching framework and how um, kind of that process will look with an executive steering committee and then advisory committees. Um, so as I look around the table, there are some faces that will be asked to participate in portions of that. So uh, really looking forward to that process. Um, as part of that, we are gonna be hopefully at the next council meeting, um, doing an agreement with Iowa State Extension to wrap in their um, rural housing readiness assessment as a part of the strategic plan. Um, so that housing assessment is something we've been looking at for a while, just waiting for the right time. Um, kind of an interesting change. Um, we've actually, because we're in Dallas County, we have not been eligible because we're not considered a rural county, even though we're a rural community in a suburban county. Um, so there was some talk about whether or not we apply for that regular grant cycle through Iowa Economic Development Authority. Um, but then Iowa State Extension also saw the need for communities that did not get into the IEDA process to go through the program and uh, go through that exercise. So they have um, formulated just kind of the same thing uh, for $5,000. Um, and the expectation or kind of the hope is that that $5,000 to Iowa State Extension would offset part of or all of that cost from the strategic plan uh, outline that we got from Bolton Bank and Ingenuity Company. So overall, looking at a wash, um, also now with Molly on board as a planner, uh, I think there's some aspects to that that we'll be able to take on more in-house and dive into some of those areas as well. But uh, we've been having good conversations with, uh, I almost said Habitat, uh, with um, Iowa State Extension 
Um, two things on Habitat. I said Habitat because Omar Padilla, who used to be the Dallas County Habitat for Humanity uh, coordinator for work that happened in Dallas County, um, is now with Iowa State Extension, and he runs this program. So he already has a good depth of knowledge of housing in Perry and things like that. Um, but speaking of Habitat, they did have a Rock the Block event last week. I believe they worked on about five houses. Um, and they also have four new homes going up. So they are quite active in Perry. And uh, as you'll see, when we get down to that community change grant, will be our local nonprofit partner to take a piece of those funds to help fix up housing in Perry. So Overall, uh, exciting on the grant, but very nice to have Habitat. It's kind of been a couple of years since they've done a Rock the Block event in Perry, but uh, kept the AmeriCorps volunteers or AmeriCorps members busy for those three days. Um, and the help was very much appreciated. So uh, great event. Um, got to go speak to them and just tell them about uh, the volunteers for Habitat on Wednesday. Just talk about the meaningfulness of the work they're doing and the impact that they're having on the community. So uh, some really great work and hopefully a lot more to come with Habitat activity, hopefully with a successful grant application. So um, right. those are some of the things that come to mind, but does anybody have questions? Susie, Liz, did I miss anything that we've been doing? Um. Just to prep, I guess, on the finance side, um, coming up to getting closer to bidding time for the downtown project, um, we will be looking at going out for a what they call a bridge loan um, to just help with the cash flow with that large of a project to help get us through uh, between pay requests coming in and those checks going out and then some grant reimbursements coming back in. So I think working with Susie, some good lessons learned from the 2020, I think it's called downtown project, 2021, whatever it is, the Bateman Street project. Um, I think we are close to getting the final reimbursements or most of the final reimbursement from the state. Um, blessing and a curse of our alphabet soup approach to project funding, but um, EDA uh, through the Fed had to go through the entire closeout process before RISE would look at it. So um, with the next round of alphabet soup of downtown that is causing not wrinkles or gray hair on Susie, but um, <laughs> we're we're going to be a little bit a step ahead of that just to have that cash flow so that we're not uh, paying out more than we're able to bring in in a timely manner. So that'll be a huge thing. And with the scale of projects we have going, uh, will probably be something that might become a little bit more normal for us. Um, so that we'll have a component of kind of those draws and reimbursements and then the opportunity to do more of a traditional permanent financing at the end for a portion if we choose. So um, that's one thing uh, we're working on getting an updated opinion and probable cost on that project as we get closer to bidding so that we can uh, start kind of getting an idea of all of our funding sources and how we want to approach that project. So just kind of a heads up on the financial side that's going to be coming up with that project, but hopefully bidding uh, this fall into early winter and getting started first thing next year. So next that's construction question. year. So uh, that bridge loan, would that be a draw type of account so we don't pay interest until we borrow it? Yep. So from what we discussed, it's kind of that draw system and then we can pay that back once we get reimbursed um, so that we have very minimal interest until if we would want to do that permanent financing. So definitely just kind of a draw it out, 
get our reimbursement back from grants and then pay that back as soon as possible. So, and whatever interest costs there would be would just kind of be built into that project cost that we would be looking at overall. It's ouch right now. What's that? Interests are ouch right now. Yeah, well, we might get lucky and get a drop this fall if the uh, reserve gods are kind to us. So any other questions for me? All right. Thank you, sir. Um, just one thing I wanted to bring up was I uh, just wanted to thank Channel 13 and the RVTV folks for picking us yesterday. It was a great time and uh, a very large crowd, a big lot of fun. Everybody seemed to be having a good time. Uh, I wanted to thank all the people who volunteered and helped with that. Um, people kept coming up to me and thanking me, and I had to assure them that the only thing I did was to ask you guys to approve allowing it and then we approved the liquor permits for the two spots outside and uh, other than that um I helped with the rotary on their putting greens a little bit but um, it didn't have anything to do but i know lots of people spent a lot of hours and planned it out and it went off really really well in my opinion so it was great to see so many people downtown smiling <laughs> it was a fun day yeah it was yeah it was I think it would be nice if if you could provide to me and I would hope to everybody addresses where we could send a thank you just on our own. You know, saying we really appreciate the fact that you were here, you did this, you did that. Yeah. I'll look into it. Maybe an email address. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever yep. works. Yeah. Yep. Keep it simple. It was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great weather. Oh, Good idea. yeah. Good idea. Okay. I think you can also find them all on Twitter, too. Or X. X? If you want to tweet at them. Or X at them? I don't know. Don't forget, forget how old I am. <laughs> Not a day over 30, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> 30 years older than the internet? Or thanks. On. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other? Okay, we'll go on to open forum. Uh, speakers will be asked to step up the microphone, state their name and address for the record, and then they will be given three minutes to address the council. Dirk, uh, just one comment. We got the Perry High School just won their first game, and uh, Friday night they got another one. Let's get out and support. Go Perry. Go Perry. Hi, I'm Misty Von Baron. I am um, here representing Chamber of Commerce, City of Perry, um, but basically the RVTV committee. And on behalf of us, we would like to thank everybody for coming out and participating. In addition to um, thanking all those that did help volunteer the planning committee, there were lots of people from the City of Perry, the Chamber. Um, we started our day at like 5.30 in the morning yesterday and ended it very well late into the night. And then John and his crew and Josh and his crew were back out there today, this morning, getting things started to be cleaned up. So I just wanted to thank everybody for coming out, supporting the community, supporting those businesses that came out to um, really showcase our community and our town. And um, I think it was a really great event. I heard nothing but positive things and um, lots of, can we do this more often? And the answer to that is yes, we would love to do this more often. And if you are interested in volunteering for such a thing, please let me know because it would be, it would be great. It was, it was wonderful to see thousands of people downtown. So it was amazing. So thank you all very much for um, participating in any way, shape or form that you did, whether you're a presenter, a mini golf, just being there with cars or just participating so thank you all very much thanks Mr. thank you anyone else my name is caleb whiny uh 802 15 street perry iowa and then uh 10 and a half acres on north park street um i'm making a specific request to the council this evening um for 41.08 and 4109 um, so I have some handouts just of a map of the area that I'm requesting and then the specific ordinance. So
there's any uh, thank you thank you so specifically i have the the 4108 outline there um and it states it is unlawful for a person to discharge rifles shotguns revolvers pistols guns bb guns or other firearms of any kind within the city limits except for by the written consent of the council and then point two there no person shall intentionally discharge a firearm in a reckless manner 4109 states throwing and shooting is unlawful for a person to throw stones bricks missiles of any kind or to shoot arrows rubber guns slingshots air rifles other dangerous instruments or toys on or into any street, alley, highway, sidewalk, public way, public ground, or public building without written consent of the council. So if you flip back, um, I have a outlined map there to kind of um, try to help paint a picture visually where I'm currently shooting and where I'm asking specific permission for. So your map is oriented with the, the northwest or the north being the blue, the corner there. So um, the parcel that's outlined in blue in that north corner on the last four seven zero zero one, that is a portion of my property that is outside of the city limits. So that's where I can discharge my fireworks, discharge my firearms, and and be legal and do all that great stuff. Um, I've had the opportunity to uh, speak with Chief Vaughn about it, as well. I've uh, had Adam and Vonte, who's our Dallas County Sheriff, comment on a nice shooting range setup that I have out there. So um, my request is to kind of shift the way in the direction I'm shooting. So in the army, we have a we have a term. So know your target and know what's beyond. And so what's beyond my south corner of that property is the bike trail in town. So bullets will travel a certain distance before they'll drop off and fall. And so I have built up certain berms, taken different safety standards to make sure I'm shooting in a good direction. But there's still a portion of me that that realizes I'm still shooting towards town. And if I were to get permission from the council, I can shift from shooting a good direction really to a great direction. And so if you look on your map there in the highlighted sections that are red, that is the property that I own that is within the city limits. So if you look at that south section there, parcel number 5003, if I were shooting from east to west on that parcel, there is nothing out that direction from east to west. There's no homes. It's just, it's open fields and it's it's open clear to Dawson, which no round is gonna, is gonna travel that far. So um, my, I guess my my concern as a, as a firearms instructor, as a current, you know, service member, as a responsible gun owner, taking my direction from good to great is really kind of what I'm asking the city council to consider when granting me permission to be able to discharge my firearm. And as well as, you know, if my son were out playing with his bow and arrow someday and we're out shooting targets or he's out shooting BB guns, I, I want to make sure that if I have to keep him in the county side, I want to make sure that he stays there. But it'd be easier for me, you know, as a future dad to know that my son is is good to be able to to discharge his BB gun and not be on the wrong side. And then all of a sudden we have all these different problems. Um, just with, again, being county property and city property. So that is that is my request. Um, I realize that, you know, firearms are a responsibility. And, you know, oftentimes you'll hear people with a concern of of noise, kind of the same thing with fireworks. It's it's noise. It's, it's disturbing to others. Um, something that I have personally invested in quite often is a, it's a suppressor. So this is a form four item that screws onto the end of your firearm, which then allows you to fire rounds um, suppressed, silenced. So this particular caliber, if you had the right load, you could discharge this firearm in the room right below us, and we would have no idea that it went off. So that's just something to consider. I do have, um, I'm able to run probably 85 to 90% of my firearms suppressed. So again, just being close to town, consider of your neighbors and such. That's why I've chosen to invest heavily into to this equipment. So that is just my um, my request for the 41.08 for that exception for the, the written consent from the council. So one's kind of with the, the guns, and then from the other one, from my understanding, it's more like the bows and arrows. So, uh, so do you is... want us to write off all of these three parcels that are in the 
Um, or just one or honestly, if it would probably be easier again, just on the, the ease of mind, if, if we could do all three, that'd be great. Um, if you, if you choose one, um, the five zero zero three is probably going to be the best option there. Um, if, if I had to choose one, I would request that one specifically, but if, uh, if we can just do all of my my uh, property that's when, within city limits, that way there's never a question of if if somebody were to request an officer to come out and to see where you know the shots are coming from, we aren't getting out a tape measure or you know we aren't having Ty come out and survey it and be like, well, you know, he was he was here and it wasn't here because it's literally I could step here and discharge my firearm and be legal and perfectly fine, but then I step a foot this way and discharge my firearm. Well, then I'm in city limits. Yeah. So that's that's just I'm trying to eliminate that line just for I don't know my own personal concerns and whatnot. But and your intention is to shoot from east, east, east west. west. So taking it from a good direction to a great direction. So I'm just trying to work with what I have and just don't want to get shot when I'm out in perfect park. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> now is this going to be for other people or just for just for me? I'm I'm the only one that's out there, you know. Eventually, it'd be my wife, my kids, and whatnot. But the the berms and the shooting ranges I have set up. I, I took my skid loader, and my bulldozer, and pushed up big piles. They're steel. I've got railroad ties around it to catch shrapnel and stuff. So. So what is your main part? Wow. He can. I mean, if it would be like if you want to come out and shoot some plays with me, or you know, some buddies from church or whatever, we can. You can go out and shoot on the county part, but if I had permission on the city, I would then allow them as well to be able to shoot on the, the city. Anybody part. Is allowed to shoot. I, with it being my permission in my private property, yes. If a stranger is out on my property discharging a firearm, we're going to have a lot bigger, that individual is going to have a lot bigger problems with me because they aren't supposed to be there because it's the private property. But like my friends or my pastor or whatever, like we've gone out and we've shot clays out there couple different times just set up the machine and throw them in you shotguns are a lot safer as far as the spread of the projectile they aren't designed to be a long-range projectile so shotguns are a lot safer in that aspect i you don't really need a, a backdrop because the bbs fall off and they're super super small lethal at a close range but at a, at a further distance not not lethal at all now as opposed to like a rifle one uh the sheriff put eyes on and he was the one that texted me like nice shooting range when he's out there putting his sign up in the ditch. He was like he shot me a text, he's like, nice shooting range you got out there. Said, Thank you for that. Um I'm not sure if Chief Vaughn has Okay, yeah. He he's familiar with the area. <laughs> um but if there's any other questions, I, I don't want to I take too much of the council's time. Respectful of that, but I'm happy to answer any questions. I'll be around afterwards. I would sort of like to recommend that we table this. Yep. Well, and it, 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 it would. Form, so. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it you. would have to be on a future agenda. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Caleb. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, we'll go to old business. Um, Approval of change order number three for the 2024 HMA street repairs. It's for the weapon amount of a minus $5.49. And um, it's a little bit of a reduced scope at the airport to incorporate additional parking areas and surface restorations. So I think this is one of those that our efforts to do it is going to take cost much more than the amount that we're, we're, we're saving, but it's got to be done. So that motion, please. I make a motion we approve change order number three for the 2024 HMA repairs. I'll second. Okay. So we saved five and a half bucks. So it's not a lot, but it's a step in the right direction. <laughs> uh, so, so what it is, is it's a kind of reconciling, balancing out some of the quantities we know we're done with, where we found some cost savings. Um, with kind of how the airport road has gotten beat up, we want to make sure that we're putting it back properly. So we did revise some of the scope a little bit just to beef that road up. Um, with some of the offset that we're doing. Uh, and then just timing, getting the contractor back up there. There was a small remobilization fee, very minor. I think it was $1,500. 
So just some of those nuances of the contractor working with us and then some additional trails, um, getting those buttoned up with this project. So utilizing them while they're here. So I think to get in to a couple of things a little bit, <laughs> sorry, Liz, um, at the airport, um, it has that circle drive in the middle. So we're actually gonna be uh, paving through that and then squaring off that whole parking area so that it actually functions as a parking lot better. Uh, looking forward to uh, additional use out there as well as um, there's quite a bit of use out there for um, the flight school as well. So additional parking is uh, gonna be very helpful. So um, I think initially we did have a little bit of a of a connection road planned over to Osmondson's. Uh, we had that in the plans and in conversations with them, uh, they didn't feel that they wanted that. So we were able to take that quantity and apply it to the parking area. So uh, that pretty well evened out, um, but definitely gonna be a huge improvement on there. And then looking at replacing the Frog Creek Trail between uh, Willis and Warford, and then uh, doing some kind of more temporary patching up in the Perkins Park area while they have asphalt in town. So um, we have part of asphalt. Pardon? In other words, we have partial asphalt up there. Partial. We'll have more asphalt for the partial asphalt trail. So, um, but some of that comes back to the grant application, uh, which again, we'll get into more later. So, you nailed it. Thanks. And I tried to keep it short for Liz. And then the one last update is tentatively weather pending August or August, September 16th was when the contractors look and come back in to pave that roadway out of the airport. So okay. we'll get everything else buttoned up right after that. Great. The discussion? Roll call. Walling? Yes. Wine? Yes. Shelley? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, item B, approval of pay application number five for the Iowa Street Stormwater Wetland. It's for the amount of $136,230.80 to Sandstone Management Limited. Um, and that puts them at 70.3% and complete and uh, has been reviewed and recommended for approval. Motion, please. I make a motion we approve pay application number five for Iowa Street Stormwater Wetland. I'll second. Solution's been moving along very nicely with weather coming up for us. Uh, majority of the grading's done. They're just doing that fine grading, getting the trail set up on the Iowa Street side closest to 131. Um, as they get that prepped, they're going to start putting in the, the boardwalk bridge here this coming week. And then you'll start seeing the concrete maintenance path get installed behind that and then working parking lot out. Once they get that started, they're also going to finish the fine tooth grading and black dirt on the super eight side. That way they can kind of tackle both at the same time, but they have a subcontract with concrete. So kind of attacking it at all fronts and trying to button it up as soon as possible. Right. So any estimated completion time? I don't have that. The biggest thing we're working through right now is the the seedings, the restoration, making sure we got good weather for them. Uh -huh. um, so we're actually working with the seed provider as well as um, SRF and IDOL staff just to make sure we got it all pinned down properly and get it restored right. And people so in the neighborhood. It's coming together quick. <laughs> <laughs> people in the neighborhood are excited. <laughs> and I think there is a chance that some of that final seeding and some of the plant plugs will happen in the spring. Yeah, so correct. there might be a little bit more activity in the spring, mm -hmm. but should be significantly complete this fall. By the time it's filled up, it'll be done. Sorry, filled up once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once. <laughs> okay. More discussion? Roll call. Fine. Yes. Shelley. Yes. Falling. Yes. Shot. Yes. Okay. Item C. Approval pay application number five for Frog Creek Restoration. It's the amount of seventy six thousand nine hundred eighty four dollars and ten cents to Iowa Earthworks. Uh, phase three and four. The project is at thirty eight point three percent 
complete and has been signed off and reviewed and recommended for approval by the project engineer. A motion, please. I make a motion. We approve pay application number five for the Crow Creek restoration. And I'll second. Same with this one. Things are starting to roll together pretty good. They're working on the southern side, closer to 141, in between the ball diamonds uh, by the city's maintenance shed. Um, <laughs> so it's coming together good on the east side there. They've got all the fecals from. Uh, the salt shed up to the ball diamonds are kind of getting that graded in there to make sure all the water falls away from the ball fields. There were some ridges we got cleaned out um, and then hopefully getting started on the west side, trying to button that up from highway out into the park. Um, biggest thing we had them do is just make sure all the uh, operations were away for the, the festival that was down there a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then eventually they will button up that north side as well. Discussion? Roll call. Wally? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay, Adam B. Resolution approving a contract with Region 12 for planning and administrative assistance. Um, to carry out project contract number 23WS017 with the IEDA and the Community Development Grant, CDBG, water sewer. Uh, accepted. Uh, would not exceed $30,000 within the contract period. And this would authorize the contract with Region 12 and allow the mayor to sign the documents. It's for their oversight of these projects. So have a motion, please. Motion to approve uh, item D, resolution approving contract in Regional 12 for planning and administrative assistance. I'll second. So as the mayor mentioned, this is just grant admin for the CDBG grant for the downtown project. Um, this is basically cookie, cookie cutter from every CDBG grant we get. Um, I think moving forward, um, I think Molly actually did some of our CDBG grant admin for the wastewater treatment plant. So we're looking at the possibility of her becoming certified through the state to administer grants um, to either share the load or just have that knowledge within our staff um, to be able to do some of this work in-house right. in the future. Other discussion? Roll call. Shelly? Yes. Fine. Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay, item E is resolution accepting grant agreement for the FAA for the fiscal year 2024 airport infrastructure grant. Um, it's for the current 1432 runway project. Um, it's basically going to uh, maximum obligation of $46,500, including a 10% local share. Uh, they actually would uh, accept the grant terms and authorize the city administrator to sign documents. So, could I have a motion? I make a motion to approve resolution accepting grant agreement from the FAA for a fiscal year 2024 airport infrastructure grant. And I'll second that. So this is the second of two grants for the parallel taxiway design. The first one was AIP, uh, Airport Improvement Program, entitlement funded, which you get every year, $150,000. Uh, this portion or this grant itself is from the BIL uh, Airport Improvement Grant Program. Uh, we used initially some of these funds for the SRE equipment, uh, but this will cover 17, the remaining 17% of the design costs for the parallel taxiway uh, design portion of the overall project. Okay. 13% for Thirteen. Right. I'm sorry, 13. 13. <laughs> I think it was in August, two or three meetings ago, we approved the 87% grant agreement. So this is just the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So, and now I won't get email reminders to sign the agreement every three hours from the FAA. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Any discussion? Roll call. Fine. Yes. Wally. Yes. Shelly. Yes. Shot. Yes. 
Okay, item F, resolution approving work order number 13, scope of work for the 2025 terminal building expansion and rehabilitation. Um, it's Fulton and Meg, and um, it's gonna be for design and bid administrative services. That's in the amount of 60,000, which will be funded 80% by the DOT, Gabby funding and 20% by us. And a motion please. Make a motion. We pass the resolution approving work order number 13, scope of work for the 2025 terminal building expansion and rehab. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> so it would have been in May of 2023 that we applied for this grant through the DOT. It is uh, general aviation vertical infrastructure grant. Um, we got it matched uh, 8020 for a total project cost of 375000 DOT covers 300, we cover the 75 for the local cost of 75,000. Um, portions for design, so we have an architect on board um, and we've done a couple of discovery meetings, both with Jack and Sven, uh, trying to figure out exactly what we want the scope of the project to be. Um, so we've had this grant for a while. Um, part of the reason for waiting was there was a uh, BIL ATP grant opportunity going around, which is very competitive. It's throughout the whole US. Um, we put in a couple of really good grant applications and they just didn't come through. So we we're waiting to see if we could appropriate some of these funds to supplement that out. That, that would have been significantly larger if we would have gotten it. But now we've kind of rolled back the scope to what we can attain with this money. Um, and I'm just looking forward to getting started. Uh, overall, uh, we're looking to get uh, design rolling here in the next month, bid uh, likely this early this winter. Um, and then the grant funds need to be totally expended by December 6th of 2025. So that'll be substantial completion, final completion, all reimbursements done. And if we need a little leeway, um, if something uh, struggles for a while, we could talk to the DOT about that. They know what we've been kind of waiting on. So uh, that's more or less what this one goes. So, okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Roll call. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Fine? Yes. Okay, on a new business resolution setting a date and time for a safety employee appreciation day. They've been doing this the last few years. They basically have some safety orientation and then uh, uh, they. Just give everybody a nice lunch and then thank them for the job they're doing. And they're setting Wednesday, November 6th from 1030 to 130 at the Perry Police Sally Port, located at 908 Willis. A motion, please. I make a motion. We set a date and time for the safety employee appreciation day. I'll second. That's fun. <laughs> so this will be our 10th one that we've had um, this year. So uh, it'll be really good. We're going to um, do uh, the speakers that we have. I know Sven's going to talk. Um, I think we're doing one on some near-miss program that we're getting ready to start, and then the other one's kind of to be determined. So uh, we'll have a lunch like we always do and have some businesses do some donations and stuff. So uh, invite all you guys to come. It's a, it's a really good event. Ask Mayor uh, Kavanaugh to maybe give a few words at the beginning as Mayor Andorf used to do for 10 years, I think. So <laughs> he can pass the reins on to you. So I'll, good. I'll remind you. Um, it, that was yeah. in the job description, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> short gonna, short and sweet is the motto, uh, so I don't want to bore We were going to do it in October, but we were waiting for Eric to retire. So okay. we can do it. <laughs> the way it's a little bit more fun. And um, so, no, I think Eric's actually going to come back for it. He's not working at Bass Pro Shops by then. So, <laughs> anyways, thanks for everything. So, appreciate it. Yeah, well, thanks for all you. Thanks, thanks for all you. Do. The thing part, you know, dissection. You went, oh, that's going to be tough to top. Mike doesn't work there anymore. So, we're probably not going to dissect maybe. big lungs or hearts. Anymore, so. <laughs> maybe we'll turkey see. vultures. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, dissection. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, other discussion? Roll call. Wally. Yes. Fine. Yes. Shelly. Yes. Shot. Yes. Okay, and based resolution approving a solar power and services agreement with Redline Perry Solar 2 LLC for the wastewater treatment plant. 
Uh, resolution 061923C, this authorized letter. And um, it's basically going to be similar to the ones we've already put up with the city responsible for 30% of the cost. And then we have to buy them out at some point in the future. Uh, total cost set estimated for us at 61000 And we would ask someone to make a motion, please. I make a motion. We approve resolution approving a solar power and service services agreement with Red Lion Dairy Solar 2 LLC for the wastewater treatment plant. I'll second. Discussion. Terry just to cover that whole bank. Um, What's that? <laughs> You're going to cover the whole bank. Pretty much. <laughs> so I, you might remember a year and a half ago or almost two years ago, approved a letter of intent. We did go for the USDA grant. We got approved by the grant. Uh, a few months ago, we've been back and forth, figuring out some of the technical piece with the line. I believe we got that figured out. We'll see. Um, and then it's been location. Northwest corner, along the bank. Uh, you mentioned the, the cost of you is not the full 61,000. It's 30% of that. So like 15,000, and that's to shave down the bank so that we can actually build on it. Um, so it's a cost share for that piece, which leaves the upper flat ground available for future buildings or whatever you want. Sounds good. It's not in use now. Yep. And I think that's one thing. And I know I probably might be a trend, but I, I have stressed Terry out a time or two uh, in all of these projects, but I think in all of these solar projects that we've done, we've really tried to focus on using as much of the underutilized or not as usable property that we have. So being able to do solar canopies above parking on rooftops um, and really focusing out here at the wastewater treatment plant on utilizing that slope of the bank between the recycle building and the lagoons even though he didn't want to do floating solar like I wanted to, <laughs> to cover the lagoons. Twice as much. Um, I let it go though for now. I like um, the idea. It's, it's gonna so um, some of the clearing and grubbing and then regrading, uh, I think will not only help drainage, but also help keep kind of that overgrowth under control along that hill. Um, so I think that's going to be great, help clean up the area out there and keep it cleaned up. So um, excited to move forward with this. It's one of the boogers that we've been talking about uh, getting solar for for quite a while, but this USDA grant really was able to bring that cost down to where it was able to make sense for us. Um, and I believe I need some coaching, but this will bring us close to about three megawatts of solar offsetting city usage between all of our on-site solar and the Alliant Energy uh, customer hosted solar project. So uh, as we sit today, we're right around 100% offset with solar. So this will definitely push us over that hump uh, and we'll be actually offsetting more of our electrical use than what we consume as a city government uh, with solar. So. Definitely a great opportunity for us and continuing to push towards not only the sustainable aspect of having solar, but also being able to realize uh, significant savings in the long term. So, which I apologize, my projections on the current system were a little bit off. You're saving the summer between four to five times as much. <laughs> <laughs> and you can take so, a line to that because that's yep. their increases for yeah them. yeah so a lot more than we expected um one more thing that i didn't mention we're still trying to get pricing on getting that old wind tower steel down i don't have prices yet firmed up but we'll come back with what we can find out that comes from liz's previous life so we'll give her a hacksaw and she can go I take care of it <laughs> I think Mr. Shelley could be a There you go. Yeah. There's <laughs> a DMAC project. So.
Yeah. So tonight is just to approve the power purchase agreement so we can move forward. It may take some, just to give you kind of a heads up on the schedule, Alliance gonna be driving the initial schedule. Um, projects like this can take two months to four months for Alliant to go through their various reviews that they deem they want to do. Um, so that's gonna dictate when we can start construction. So I would love to get it done by the end of the year, but it's just gonna depend on how quick Alliant approves the application. And if they don't come back and say, hey, you need to upgrade our system for a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Wow. Anything else? Roll call, please. Why? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Okay. Thank Item you. number C resolution approving tax payment applications for residential construction completed in Prairie, Iowa. Um, we did one of these earlier on. I think we had just left someone off, and so we need to catch them up. And so I have a motion, please. And then we'll motion to approve item C, resolution approving tax abatement application for residential construction completed in Perry. I second that. Discussion. One application. Yep. One rehab. Uh, no, I New? believe it was uh, a demo and a recall. Okay. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Shelly? Yes. Wally? Yes. Shot? Yes. Plank? Yes. Okay, down to final item. Uh, it's item D, resolution authorizing the submission of an environmental and climate justice community change grant to the EPA. Um, it's a very large one, for $22.5 million. Um, it's got a lot of different things in it we're planning to do, so a bunch of small projects within the big one. It's going to be really helpful to us if we can get this and we can do a lot of good work. Um, so could I have a motion, please? I make a motion. We pass a resolution authorizing the submission of an environmental and climate justice community change grant to the EPA. Well, and I'll second. <laughs> okay, discussion. So there's quite a bit included in the packet as well as uh, the summary, but um, this is one, I think I mentioned it earlier this spring, early summer that folks from the EPA actually came up just to talk about our current EPA grant and then other opportunities uh, that the EPA has for funding. Uh, this is one of the ones that they discussed. So kind of since then, we've been working on putting together uh, a, really a collection of projects um, to hopefully make as large of an impact as possible on the community. So um, kind of the big portions of this project are, I think, around $8.2 million for energy efficiency upgrades. Um, as well as indoor air quality. So um, HVAC systems for indoor air quality and then um, insulation, windows, uh, energy efficient siding, just, just you name it if it has to do with energy efficiency. Um, one of the really incredible things about this that doesn't happen a lot is this is that energy efficiency and indoor air quality money can be spent on single family homes that are owner occupied or rental and multifamily as well. So, um, and then a portion also for public buildings. So um, what we're really working on right now is getting down to the Nats behind budget on improvements uh, for energy efficiency and air quality for um, the hotel, La Poste and then the Curry Center um, with the next phases of work that need to be done in those facilities. Um, so taking, utilizing this grant to take a large financial burden off of us with future needs of facilities that we have. Um, but then I think overall really a focus on impacting our residents as much as possible. So, uh, really trying to pump a lot of money into the energy efficiency for housing, um, and partnering with Habitat for Humanity, like I mentioned, and then Region 12 Council of Governments is also going to help on the 
rental units and multifamily units because uh, that's not really within uh, Habitat's mission for those non-owner occupied units. Um, then we're also looking at about $7.5 million in trails and sidewalks in the city. So rehabbing uh, quite a bit of the Patti Park to Perkins Park corridor or the, the Frog Creek Trail, um, and then making some really impactful connections with trails and sidewalks inside of the community as well, just to really help uh, with transportation and alternate modes of transportation, getting kids to and from school, um, also focusing on getting uh, access corridors to downtown as well as from residential areas to areas of employment. So looking at a trail or a sidewalk going out uh, west towards the old, I'll now say old Tyson facility, as well as east towards the business park and industrial park. Uh, and including along First Street up to um, Northgate Estates, that's been one, bless you, Liz. Um, so there is a map included in the packet of kind of our initial thoughts on trail connections, um, but really that's gonna be a matter of, you know, honing in on uh, the trail or sidewalk types, budget, things like that. So those are the things that we're pulling together um, to hopefully really get a good project uh, scoped and within this budget. So um, in one of the uh, amendments to the funding opportunity that came out, I think in August, they actually removed the hard cap of $20 million um, with the intent that you can be somewhat over that $20 million to help with soft costs. So that's uh, some of our staff time in uh, administering and working with this program, as well as professional services for design work that would need to be done, construction, observation, things like that. So um, trying to keep all of this uh, within that budget so there's not a, an effect on the overall budget. Um, and I feel pretty comfortable about that with this. Um, the fun part is that um, EPA has made us well aware that we can apply for up to two of these grants because um, they're taken on a rolling basis. And as long as there's not two applications in the same review period, um, we can apply for up to two grants. So. Um, initially, when we were looking at this, uh, we were looking at about $10 million of that being a downtown project of Third Street, uh, kind of finishing up that Third and Warford down to Otley and over to Second Street. Um, but we took that and focused that more on the trails portion and bumped up, just kind of played a little bit of fudging with numbers bumped up the money that we're investing in housing, uh, switch that over to trails, really just to kind of make this holistic approach of uh, improving people's quality of life and living conditions. So a um, few other things in this are the electrification of city vehicles. So we've identified a few that make good candidates to test that out, um, as well as a, what is it, waste reduction for a circular economy, um, which I think ChatGPT wrote some of this. It sounds like something they would say, but um, trying to build off of the uh, debris management site and building our own composting program. Uh, so some equipment for that uh, function to be able to really kick off our composting program that we've talked about as well as some funds to expand uh, both capacity and locations of the library's food recovery program. Um, so again, trying to mold as many of these projects around helping our residents as much as we can. Um, I guess uh, a good portion for uh, workforce development programs. So uh, we had a phone call with uh, he doesn't like being called this, but President Denson at DMAC about uh, partnering with DMAC on the uh, job training side of it. And DMAC is on board to help with that. So 
I think overall, a lot of good opportunities, um, kind of a, a once in a long while opportunity. Um, basically, they have about $2 billion to shovel out the door before the end of the year. Um, so they're really trying to bundle all of their programs and really make uh, impactful and intentional investments in communities more than just their kind of smaller one-off programs. So, so that's taken a little bit of my time. Yes. The last couple of months, but it's come together. Um, shout out to Madison at Bolton Mink and Nicole with Impact 7G for helping put this together, um, as well as staff picking their brain on opportunities and how it fits into what we're doing. So um, should be very, if successful, very impactful projects for the community. So yes. definitely very excited about that. That's great. Okay. It's exciting. Roll call, please. Wally? Yes. Fine? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Shelly? Yes. Okay. If there's nothing else, you will the chair. Thank you all. Good night. Okay. I shut this down last time and